Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2 Super Mini Mail Call. This is a package from Seth in Tampa. Seth has sent stuff into the, to the uh, basement before. Last seen in Super Mini Mail Call number 24, I think. A whole bunch of stuff for the TRS-80. And uh, he sent in this uh, big box for me here. Now you'll notice on the side of this box are these, uh, I don't know, like full page printouts here that just say, just here for the cake. And uh, that's actually a king cake. I know it's a little bit hard to see. Let me tilt the box over. It's kind of heavy. But yeah, just here for the king cake and uh, let them eat king cake. So king cake is a type of cake that is served around Mardi Gras in New Orleans. And I've had it plenty of times before and it's very good, very, very sugary. Uh, has a little baby, plastic baby inside the cake. It's pretty awesome. If you're unfamiliar with what a king cake is, I'd check it out. I'll look on Wikipedia. But Seth actually went ahead and he sent me a king cake last year. I didn't really feature it on a mail call episode, but it was simply delicious. And yes, as a diabetic, eating king cakes, probably not the best thing for me. So I ate, um, you know, a little bit of it over some time. But the best thing to do with a king cake, of course, is not hoard it all to yourself, but to share it with friends, which is exactly what I did. So thanks very much, Seth, for sending in that king cake. And, uh... Yeah, I don't think there's another king cake in here. I did reach out to him when I got this package and I double checked because I've had this package now for, uh, well, I think it got sent in around May. So it's been a little bit of time. It's July now while I'm opening this. So I didn't want a cake to be in here going bad, for instance. <laughs> and I don't think that is the case. If you are gonna send in, I guess just a top tip for any viewers who are sending in something to the mail call, please write on there like, perishable or something like that on the side, just in case I'm not aware that there's something in there that may not keep if it sits around for a couple months. The basement's nice and cool. So if it's candy or something like that in a, in a package, there'll be no trouble with it spoiling. It never gets over like 21 degrees down here at Celsius or like about 70, 71 degrees. So it's totally safe. But on the other hand, if it's something like a king cake, which is baked fresh and then shipped overnight, that's not good to sit around. Anyhow, let's take a look at what is inside of this package that has been in the basement for a while. And I see inside here some potentially fun stuff. So I'm going to reposition the camera. And look at this, repositioning the camera. <laughs> There's like wrapped presents in here. <laughs> look, this is super hilarious. So this one here, just here for the cake again. Something wrapped up. I'm just going to unpack everything from the box. And actually the next one in here seems to take up the whole bottom of the box and it's really heavy. So let me do a jump cut. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, what was in the box, like a giant wrapped present. And uh, we have an envelope here with something. Oh, look at this, something else here. To Adrian from King Cake Guy, note inside. So I just peel that off, see what the note is. Is this just some extra wrapping paper? I think it is, yep. What is in the note package? Greetings, Adrian, and your wonderful basement. Please enjoy this SMCC. <laughs> it's actually SMMC, Super Mini Mail Call, but that works. Submission themed Portland Goes to Mardi Gras, sugar-free edition. Although I now live in Florida, it was always fun to share a little carnival with those in other parts of the world. Please find the enclosed, okay, well, this is giving away what's actually in here. I folded it over to not spoil uh, what some of the contents are. Diabetic friendly king cakes are only available during Mardi Gras season, but to make up for yet another shortage, I included an entire New Orleans baking kit, including stevia, to ensure that it is diet friendly for you. Wow. <laughs> Since Mardi Gras, of course, involves plenty of drinking and <laughs> setting things on fire, I've included a butane torch that I'm sure you'll use very carefully <laughs> and I won't try at home. Hopefully the New Orleans Café du Monde or Café of the World coffee is a better match for the torch than bourbon or whiskey. I'm not so sure about that. I love bourbon and whiskey. Please enjoy all the accoutrement as well as the beautiful Mardi Gras history book and thank you so much for all you do and keep doing it. Your loyal viewer and patron, King Cake Guy. Well, AKA Seth, I already give that away on the outside of the box. All right, well, I have a feeling what's in here is not gonna be particularly digital or analog based, but let's just take a quick look at this. Now, of course, uh, goes without saying that I do not run a cooking show or anything like that. 
So if this is indeed a baking kit, I am not going to be making this on camera. I'll probably just mention it in a future mail call video. Now, when it comes to baking, I am not bad at cooking actually at all, but baking cakes is like a scientific experiment that you know you need to go right for things to taste good. And that is something I've never really tried my hand at. So I'll probably leave this to friends who are much better at baking than I am, if indeed that's what this is. All right, we have a box inside that wrapping paper that looks absolutely chocked full of stuff here. All righty, what do we have here? That's just uh, packing material. Insert coin to play, 25 cents. This appears to be a large sticker. Very cool. Uh, of course, that's a close-up of an arcade cabinet here in the US and Canada, arcade games. This is just one, yeah, this is just one. It's a big vinyl sticker. So that's kind of fun. I gotta figure out where I might wanna stick that, maybe on the side of an old computer or something like that. All right, looks like we have a bunch of like bunting or fun stuff here for the next Mardi Gras celebration, which I think is in February of uh, every year. So that'll be saved for next year. So when a wonderful king cake is baked, we'll have lots to celebrate. Oh, wow, this is just chock or block full. Okay. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this really is like Mardi Gras in a box here. So these are Mardi Gras beads, of course. So if you go to uh, New Orleans during Mardi Gras, everyone's out having fun on Bourbon Street. I've never been, unfortunately, to New Orleans at all. So I can't say I've ever celebrated it firsthand, but these beads are definitely what you need to celebrate. So again, like that, like that festive stuff on the top. I'll be saving this for the future. And next up we have a Mardi Gras shirt. <laughs> it's like a button up shirt here with the Mardi Gras colors. I freaking love it. <laughs> Seth wasn't kidding. There's a massive, massive package of stevia here. So stevia is a non-sugar substitute. It's made from a root plant or something like that. So supposedly it's all natural, whatever that means. I do use stevia. I have some upstairs and I put that in things when I need to sweeten things. So we got some more beads. Ah, this is the coffee that Seth was talking about here. Cafe du Monde, so cafe of the world here. Coffee and chicory. Hmm, I've not had this. I will be using this in my coffee maker. Not right now on a video because it's summertime. It's way too hot right now. And it's not first thing in the morning when I drink coffee, but I'll definitely be making that. Okay, we got some beignet mix, French donuts. <laughs> Freaking awesome. So awesome. Okay, I can't wait. So I wonder if, yeah, it's easy to substitute the stevia in place of sugar in those. Looks like we have some stevia in the raw, zero calorie sweetener. It's so weird, this has like a weird texture to it, but um, nice, more of that. More beads. All right, we have something here that looks like it is technical, as is this. So I'm gonna put the technical stuff off to the side, which we'll get to in a second. It appears that we have a coffee mug. Okay, boy, I have really crappy lighting going on with this uh, mail call opening. Oh, there, hopefully it's a bit easier to see there. Cafe du Monde, original French market coffee stand, New Orleans, Louisiana, coffee and beignets. I think, I hope I'm saying that right. I never learned the word for donut, I guess, in, uh, in French. Serving cafe au lait and hot beignets, French donuts, uh, 24 hours a day, year round. This familiar New Orleans landmark has been located in the French Quarter since, what does that say, 1862? That's pretty amazing. Okay, there it is. That's the King Cake Baking Kits. So um, this is awesome. I can't wait to send pictures to friends who are better bakers. And uh, yeah, we're absolutely going to be making this. Okay, it doesn't end here though. Got another one of these large stickers. Okay, there is the butane micro torch. You know, these are pretty good um, for, for instance, doing heat shrink tubing where you don't have access to like your hot air gun or whatever. Like if you're just in a really tight spot, I wonder how controllable the flame is. I wonder if you can make it really small. I've never, never had one of these. So we'll take a look at this in a second. We have two of these for chips that don't make it through the night. Chips that pass in the night. Chips that pass in the night? No, chips that pass in the night. Let's see, it's in a box. Let's open it up. Got a couple of those. Okay, is this, uh, 
Is this a dead parts bin? Potentially another one. Wow, that's quite beautiful there. Very intricate. Wait, what is that? Wait, IBM Professional Services Workshop, Bangkok, Th Thailand, June 17th to 21st, 1991? What the, is this, is this real? Wow. Uh, here is presumably the bottom of the box. I need to get the knife to cut into this, but I need to be very careful. Don't want to cut into the box. All right, this definitely appears to be the bottom of the box. So that goes on the top there. And it's just a very nice looking Thai box. I've been to Thailand several times, amazing country. And I guess, um, was this something that was given away to people who attended some conference there? Professional services workshop in Thailand in 1991. <laughs> that is freaking crazy. Funny how like, that's the way the box is. See, there's like elephants on it. And when you lift it up that way, the writing is it's upside down. Like, I'm not sure why that would be. Like, there could almost be hinges right there. And of course, <laughs> anyhow, that's really nice. All right, well, it appears there's another one here. It says, uh, chips that pass in the night. But this is in a Chef Boyardee box. Now, if you're Italian, you're living in Italy, look away now. Don't, you'll be insulted by what this is. This is Italian food. It's really not. Um, <laughs> But anyways, it's sort of very inexpensive Italian-like food. It's like Taco Bell to Mexican food, as is Chef Boyardee to actual Italian food. Okay, what's this? Something else, another box, it looks like. Oh, wow, it says IBM on it as well. So there it is, it's like a leather-clad Feels like wood actually, but it, you know, some of these newer ones are cardboard, but it says IBM, just trying to get the light to bounce off it. IBM information records division. <laughs> Who has seen this? This is so hilarious. Like these were obviously IBM giveaways, I guess. Let's open this up. There it is. The inside, um, it's kind of got a velvet coating in here. I'm assuming these were like little presents they gave to their employees attending conferences or trips or whatever. That is very cool. But we're not done. There's actually more. Not much more. I think this is the last box here. Yes, the rest is just packing material. I'm gonna put that down there. <laughs> Let's see what's in this box here. Aha, okay. Uh, this is what Seth, said he was going to send me. So this is a Digital Electronics Corporation keyboard, right? Uh, obviously, ANSI keyboard layout. This is model number LX401-AA. And it's got a, I don't know, RJ12 or RJ11 jack there. The reason why I have this is because I have a computer that was given to me by a local viewer, which I haven't yet shown on any videos. And it's a deck rainbow. Those PCs, well, it's like a giant machine. It's sort of like a MS-DOS computer that's not IBM PC compatible. Not fully, at least, like partially. Anyways, I got it without the keyboard, but otherwise it's in good shape. I haven't turned it on. I haven't done anything with it. I wanted to get a keyboard before I turned that on so I could test it out at least a little bit. And Seth has gone ahead and come through and been able to find one of these for me. Uh, the original keyboard that came with the Deck Rainbow was like an older style than this, but after doing some reading, it seems that these are all very compatible with each other. Like they use the same communication to the computer that they're plugged into or the terminal, because this was very much used on an original terminal. So uh, yeah, he went and ordered this for me. Now I tried to get some myself off eBay and um, I was like, you know, involved in some auctions and uh, I kept getting outbid constantly. Now there is one more large package here that was inside the big box. And I'm wondering if this is another one of those keyboards or something. Actually, you know what, it's wrapping paper, right? Shouldn't I just be tearing it? <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> if you use packing tape on wrapping paper, it's really hard to tear. Usually people just use like scotch tape or cello tape, right? As it's called in some places. There we go. Now the trick is gonna be, how do I open this? Yep, 
And yes, there it is. We have another one of these, and this is the LK401 as well. So there we go, ANSI keyboard. So that's actually pretty cool. I mean, I won't need two in the end if both of these work perfectly, but in case one of these is broken, they feel like membrane keyboards, so you just kind of never know if they're gonna be flaky and not so reliable. Then I will have two to, uh, yeah, try out. Now I'm just sort of looking at the layout of these ANSI keyboards. And yeah, it's got an escape key there. That's a weird placement. I guess that, is that normal for ANSI keyboard layouts? I recently worked on a terminal, like a actual CRT based terminal. I don't know if that video is gonna be out by the time this one is out, but it had an identical layout keyboard to this. Uh, the keyboard on that terminal was made by the company that made the terminal, ADDS. But it's interesting, it's absolutely identical to this keyboard. I don't know for sure if the Deck Rainbow is fully compatible with the ANSI keyboard or it had a, a more localized like US layout keyboard here in the US, but hopefully uh, this keyboard does work on that machine and hopefully at least one of these does work and I can get that computer working. Okay, so let's just get to a few of the other things that, was, that are smaller that were inside the box. So there's this, the Microbutane Torch. Well, that is cool. It seems to come with a little carrying case with a full assortment of tools and stuff. Naked flame welding. So yes, indeed, you can do soldering with these types of things. I think uh, plumbers typically use these when they're soldering pipes together, like copper pipes. But you can also do hot air shrinking. And look at that, 500 degrees Celsius flame temperature. So I guess there's different settings for that. So that's exactly what I was talking about. If, you're, if you are doing heat shrinking and you're in a place where you can't just easily plug in your hot air gun, and these are really good choices. So it comes with a little carrying case, warranty card, a couple of little wrenches there. And there it is. There is the butane torch. It says to read the manual before trying to use it. Hmm. All right, well, there's a little stand for it. So you can put it on your desk. Sorry, I make sure this is in, in view of the camera. And I guess you push this on. I don't have it all on all the way, but then that way when you put this thing down, it, it more likely stands up without falling over. I take it you can just, nope, you can't really stand it up with just this on the base. You feel the butane in there. There's a little like safety right here. Oh, there's a flame control there. So you can do plus and minus, move that. And then I take it, it has electronic ignition or spark ignition and like a little spark device. And I guess you hold that and uh, yeah, you can't push the button unless you move this little lever first. So you have these little attachments like this one here, and what you do is you put this on the end there, and then it kind of helps do the heat shrink without melting the wires that are behind it. It just keeps the heat around the little heat shrink part you're trying to do. And then there are actually various little tips. Oh, that's super cool. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware you could do this. So this obviously screws in here. I think that's what that little wrench set is for. And the flame will actually heat the tip up probably super quickly and any excess heat will come out of the side chair, their little holes. And that's a chisel tip. So you can just do soldering and there's a blade tip and several other tips. So that, that is cool. And they give you a little sponge set here for um, wiping the tips on, <laughs> cute. Let's just take a quick look in the manual here see what's in there. It tells you what type of butane to use. Apparently there's premium butane, which is no good. And butane fuel, nope. And high quality butane, no. You have to use this 14X refined, 9X or 3X triple refined butane. All of those are fine. And it tells you how to fill it. There's a way to control where the ignition is automatic or not right here. Continuous flame lockout switch on the side, or you can enable continuous flame, plus shut it off when you're done. Ah, and then there's a flame guard attachment that you take off to then put that deflector on it, for instance. But the tips, on the other hand, can actually screw in while the flame guard thing is in place. And that's it for the manual. So that is very cool. Thank you very much for that, Seth. Um, I don't have an immediate use for this down here in the basement because I have the hot air workstation. I have this soldering iron all handy. But I do work occasionally outside of the basement and this will be super handy when I just can't get the hot air easily out of here. So the next thing he sent is a pine sill, pine sill 64. So this is what I actually use for all my soldering. So I have one right here. This is a pine sill. I'm assuming this is the same model. It's a, anyways, it's a soldering iron OLED screen. It's got USB type C and a 2.5 millimeter barrel jack. So you can plug it into like a regular 12 volt power supply, it works. I think the working voltage is from 12 volts 
all the way up to like 24 volts or something like that. But this is USB power delivery at I think 20 volts, 20 volts it actually shows it right there on the screen. And I find this to be a pretty good device. Now that one, which a viewer also sent in, actually has a problem where it occasionally freezes up. So like I'll have it sitting there in standby mode and in standby mode, it's supposed to go to sleep because this has a, a motion sensor in it. And what happens occasionally, let's just plug this in. Let's see if this is all the same. Oh, the firmware looks different. Okay, so maybe there's a firmware problem in the other one. Well, what would happen is like it would just freeze. So it would say 350 degrees and it would never go to standby. Or occasionally it's off, like it's just sitting there unused and the screen is off and I, it won't wake up by moving it, which is how it's supposed to work. And I'd have to unplug the power and plug it back in. But that is pretty cool. Oh, maybe the firmware is not different. Maybe the problem is I don't have the tip installed. So you just slide this in like so. Okay, now it sees the tip and yeah, there's a settings menu. These are pretty great. I definitely recommend them. They're very inexpensive. And the nice thing about them is of course, you can just plug in a standard USB power delivery power bank and it will work. So like your power supply from your Apple laptop or your battery powered, whatever, it will totally work as long as it's not five volts. That's, that is not enough voltage. Does this come with a little screwdriver? Uh, you do have to tighten a little screw here. One of these screws to keep this tip in. Otherwise it just will slide out. Uh, there are lots of tips though. The TS100 tips are work in this thing. And that is awesome to have spare because to be honest, this is my main soldering iron. And if it were to break, it would suck because I would be dead in the water. Okay, that goes like so. And this goes in like so. To be honest with something like this and something like this, you can be totally soldering on the go anywhere without too much trouble. That's pretty rad. Okay, what's in this? Okay, <laughs> wow. What is this? Is the game it's electro and it's a TI electronic calculator, but it's like kind of toy-like. So this was obviously made for a kid, I guess. Uh, let's see what kind of battery this takes. Okay, it takes a nine volt and it's not full of corrosion inside. That's good. This battery has a charge. Let's pop that on there. Now, of course, this is a Duraleak battery, so do not leave it in your device when you're not using it. That is a recipe for disaster. That didn't turn on. Okay, you know what? This battery might be dead though. Let me go grab one that I know is good. Okay, try number two on a battery that hopefully works. I won't put the back cover on until I know. Oh, look, we got something. I'd say this is not working super great. Off, on. So when you turn on, you get two dashes, plus one. But we type numbers, one, two, it's a two digit calculator. That can't be right. Oh, it is. What a weird thing. So 12 plus 56 equals nothing. What was that? <laughs> what is this thing doing? All right, let's try that again. One plus two equals three. What, is this a game? What? Is that trying to tell me I got the right answer? Did you see how the little animation it did? I don't really know much about this thing. Seven plus seven equals, we'll put 15, just we get a wrong answer. Okay, E, 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 I guess it's for error. 14. I guess that's the, you did a good job sign. So there's electro flash, wipe out, and there's a go button, memory bank. <laughs> this thing is weird. Okay, that's wipe out. I'm not sure what to do here. Go. Oh, eight plus eight. Okay, I get, wait, what? Okay, I get it. So <laughs> it's giving you, it's giving you like a quiz here. And if you type the wrong thing, what is this? Is there supposed to be sound on here too? Has anyone ever used one of these? It'd be definitely more fun if it had sound. Okay, kind of fun. I thought this was gonna be a real calculator. Now the screen, which of course is fluorescent or vacuum fluorescent is relatively dim, but that is a pretty fun little toy. I am not familiar with this. Uh, of course, speaking spell, speaking math. I had those when I was a kid, never had one of these. 
Does anyone know about these? Had anyone had one of these when they were a kid? Does it have sound? What's the deal? This thing is pretty fun though, I gotta say. All right, so this mix here, which made in Louisiana, includes the praline filling and the baby. So um, I think how the baby works is you actually, there's a picture of a king cake right there. You bake the baby in there and whoever is eating it, who gets that piece of the baby has to get the next king cake. That's what I understand to be the case. Now, incidentally, it does appear that this mix includes the sugar already because all they want is one egg, some butter and water and everything else is already in here. Yeah, so this obviously has the sugar in there. And there is the history of king cake, whoever wants to pause on that and uh, read that. So we have enough here, I guess, to make two king cakes. Awesome. And we have the donut mix here, which I'm assuming is same thing. Two cups of milk, water, stir with spoon until blended. You have to roll this out, makes about two dozen, and then you have to fry this. So you do fry these like you do fry regular donuts. And then at the end, you sprinkle generously with powdered sugar. Well, this is where we could probably use the stevia on the top there, but this most likely has plenty of sugar inside. And it does, it has flour, flour, milk, buttermilk, salt, sugar, leavening, which is baking powder, stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, that is cool. I bet these are super tasty. And of course, if you're eating one of those donuts or some king cake for that matter, you want to enjoy it with some of this delicious coffee, which I'll be saving for next year as well when it's the right time. Where I, of course, will wear my Mardi Gras shirt with um, Mardi Gras beads and decorate the house with some of this Mardi Gras decorations and work on my deck rainbow, which hopefully by then, by next year, February, I will have tried it out. Oh, and then of course I can store some of my goodies inside my IBM box. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you very much, Seth, for sending in all this Mardi Gras goodness, these two cool, rare IBM boxes, this Texas Instrument kids math tutor robotic looking calculator thing. And of course the soldering iron here and the butane heater torch soldering iron thingamajiggy. And of course the two deck rainbow keyboards, which are hiding under here, along with um, these cool vinyl stickers. Yeah, this is all super, super fun. So yeah, this is going to be it for this mail call episode. It's just a short one. I'll probably release a second one in the same week as this one. So Seth, thank you very much for saying this stuff in. I really appreciate it. I will definitely let you know how the king cake and uh, donuts and all this stuff goes come Mardi Gras next year. And as usual, thanks to my patrons. Their names are scrolling beside the screen. If you want to become a patron, you can do so in the link down below. And yeah, check out the main channel, subscribe to the second channel, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And that is going to be that. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.